Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how we can solve quadratic equations by using factorization. Now, a quadratic equation is something that has the form a constant, let's call it A, multiplied by x squared plus another constant, which we'll call B, say, multiplied by x plus another constant, C, and this equals zero. And the constant A must never equal zero. So I'll just write here, A doesn't equal zero. Now, in order to solve a quadratic equation, what we do is we try and factorize it. That is, create one term made up of factors, things that multiply together and equal zero. Now, what could these factors be? Well, what we need to realize is that if one of these factors was, say, a number other than zero, let's say four, for instance, what would the other factor have to be in order for this to be zero? Four times something equals zero. Well, it's not going to be minus four because four times minus four is minus 16, not zero. It has to be zero. If I had something like this, where the second factor was a number, any number, it doesn't matter what it is, any number, then let's say it was, say, seven. And we're multiplying two factors together and it equals zero. What must this first factor be? Well, it has to be zero again. Zero times anything, or anything times zero, will always give us zero. And it doesn't matter how many factors you have. I could have three factors, three things being multiplied together. Then any one of those must be a zero. And we can't rule out this case as well, where both factors are zero. Zero times zero equals zero. So what I'm trying to say then is that one or more factors must equal zero if we create a situation like this. And it's this principle then that we use to solve these kind of quadratic equations. Now I've got five examples here and I'll definitely encourage you to look at each one because I've pick them for particular reasons, to show all the different types of problems that we can get with this type of work. Now in question one, okay, what we have got here is essentially a quadratic equation. You can see that A is the 10, doesn't equal zero, B is five, and the C, well that does equal zero, okay, but that's okay. So we've got our quadratic equation that equals zero. Now we need to try and factorize the left-hand side. And the left-hand side does factorize. We always check to see whether it's got a common factor, first of all. And it has got a common factor. It is 5x. So if we factorize this in the usual way, it's going to be 5x multiplied by 2x to give us the 10x squared, and then plus 1. And this will equal zero. Now in this example, I've got three things being multiplied together, three factors in other words. I've got the five, that's my first factor, being multiplied by the x, which is my second factor, and then I've got my third factor, 2x plus 1. So I've got three things being multiplied together equaling zero. So I know by this idea here that one or more of these factors must be zero. Well, I know it can't be the five that's zero, okay? But this x here could be zero. So I could write that therefore x equals zero for that first, that second factor, I should say. Or we've got the third factor here, 2x plus 1. That could equal zero. And if I solve this equation here, in the usual way, I'd subtract one from both sides, and therefore I would get 2x equals minus 1. 
And if I divide both sides by 2 now, I end up with x equaling minus a half. So not forgetting that first solution, x equaling 0, or we therefore have x equaling minus a half, two solutions for this quadratic equation. Now, in this second one here, I picked this example purely because I wanted to show you one common mistake, first of all, that is often made. I quite often see people dividing both sides by, say, x. And that would lead to x here equaling 3. And x equals 3 is a solution. But what happens is we're not doing it the proper way. We lose a solution by doing it by that method. The proper way of doing this is to look at our terms. We've got two terms here, x squared one term and 3x the other term. Realize that it's not in this format, first of all. So we need to subtract the 3x from both sides. And if I do that, I therefore have x squared minus 3x equals 0. And I've got my quadratic equation now in this format. The a value is 1, b is minus 3, and the c value is again 0. Now, I've got to factorize the left-hand side here. I look to see if there's a common factor, and there is. It's x. So I can pull out x as a common factor, and then I've got an open bracket with x minus 3, and it equals 0. So in this example, I've got two factors, x and x minus 3. Unlike this example, where I had the three factors, the 5, the x, and the 2x plus 1. Remember, 5 couldn't equal 0. It was only the x or the 2x plus 1 that equaled 0. In this example, it can be the x that's equal to 0, or it will be the x minus 3 that would be equal to 0. So if we put this down, we can say that, therefore, x can equal 0, or the factor x minus 3 can equal 0. If we just copy this down again, we've got x equals 0, or, in this example, if we add 3 to both sides, x will equal 3. Remember, I said to you that if we divided both sides by x, it would lead to x equaling 3, which is this solution. But we lose a solution, this one here, x equals 0, because we did not for the factorizing method. Okay, so that's example 2. Now in example 3, I picked this one purely because it's in the form of a quadratic here. Okay, you can see a is 2, b is minus 1, c is minus 3, and it equals 0. But when it comes to factorizing this, there is no common factor. It factorizes to two brackets, and I'm assuming that you're familiar with this type of factorization. Okay? This factorizes to 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. You can check it out by expanding this. You'll get 2x squared minus x minus 3. Now again, in this example, we've got two factors. We've got the 2x minus 3 and the x plus 1. And that means that either one of these must be equal to 0. So therefore, we can say that 2x minus 3 equals 0, or the other factor, x plus 1, equals 0. And if we solve this in the usual way, by adding 3 to both sides, we get 2x equals 3, and then dividing both sides by 2, you end up with x equaling 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. And with this second equation here, x plus 1 equaling 0, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we end up with x equaling minus 1. Now in number 4, I pick 4 purely because in this example, we need to rearrange it. We need to rearrange it into this format. And we start off with the x squared term, and then the x term, and then the constant. 
So what I need to do is subtract the 4 and 3x from both sides. And if I rearrange that, I'm going to get x squared then minus the 3x minus the 4 equals 0. So notice how I've got the x term immediately after the x squared term. And again, in the usual way, we look to factorize this, look to see if there's a common factor. There isn't. But it turns out to be two brackets again. Those two brackets, those two factors in other words, they turn out to be x minus 4 and x plus 1. And again, we can say that therefore x minus 4 must equal 0, or the other factor x plus 1 must equal 0. And solving these two equations leads to x equals 4 or x equals minus 1. Now in the last one, number 5, we've got our quadratic equation in this format here. a is 1. This time I've got no x term. The b value is 0, but that's allowed. And I've got my constant c, which is minus 9. I look to factorize this. There's no common factor here. And if I factorize this, I should see that it's what we call the difference of two squares. It factorizes to two brackets, OK? Something like this. x minus 3 and x plus 3. We should be familiar with this. It's called the difference of two squares then. And then we've got our two factors. And again, we can put each of these factors equal to naught. We can say, therefore, x minus 3 equals naught, or x plus 3 equals naught. And if we solve these two, the first one, by adding 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3. And in the next one, if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x equals minus 3. Now, it's worth pointing out at this stage that I quite often see students when they get questions like this, solve x squared minus 9 equals 0, they take the 9 to the other side, they add 9 to both sides, in other words, get x squared equals 9, and to get x, they do the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3, but they forget that it can also be minus 3. Square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. So if you factorize, less chance then of missing out that idea of plus or minus. In this case, plus or minus 3. So I hope this has given you an overall idea then of how we can go about solving quadratic equations that factorize. All right?